。同学，请问你是什么系大几的 ？I am the founder of Bitcoin Bruins, a full-time MBA student、uh, at UCLA Anderson. 我是资管大二学生。I just graduated with two degrees in English and in theater with an emphasis in acting. 哦、oh, ，我们两个都是那个地震图之一的。I was a biochemistry major, but I already graduated last year. 我是国贸系一年级。So I go to USC and I'm majoring in economics. I'm in minoring in blockchain. Yeah, my name is Eric Chung. I am uh, currently a professor at USC Viterbi School of Engineering. Teach、uh, crypto advances in use cases, and、uh, my full-time role is on the Marshall School of Business side, where I'm the managing director for the Vanek Digital Assets Initiative. I think we got a like professional blockchain expert over here. Blockchain in three words. Yeah. Get on it. <laughs> oh, get on! Oh, wow, nice one. <laughs> Welcome to NoZ. Today we are going to walk into university in the U.S. and ask their students about what is their point of view about Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, and blockchain. And let's find out what is the difference between Taiwan and U.S. Let's go.、Um, have you ever heard of Bitcoin or blockchain? I've heard of Bitcoin, but I've not heard of blockchain. I've heard of Bitcoin and crypto, but not blockchain. What comes to your mind when you heard about crypto? I guess just little pictures of coins. Pictures of coins? <laughs> yeah. If you want to send someone money to anyone around the world, and just by internet, and you don't need a bank, you don't need a third party, and you can transfer your money to others' account.、Okay. Um, what is your thoughts about this kind of technology? I think that's really, really good.、Um, I immediately think of like Zelle through like Chase or things like Venmo, you know, these third-party services.、Um, I think having it just be online makes it way more accessible, but it also makes me worry just a bit in terms of security purposes. Like, how can we make sure this, you know, stays protected as it transfers? Do you know anyone beside you who trades or buy crypto? I think so. I think a few of my friends do. I have one friend who was like a finance major, so he like did it a little bit. But I haven't asked him in depth about about、okay. it too much. So, but I definitely know people.、Mm, I don't think so. You don't think so? I don't think so. I have one friend who maybe does. If crypto is easy to use and it is security enough, so if you can transfer your assets peer to peer just by internet, will you use it in the future? Yeah, potentially. I guess if it was like other people used it first, and then、yeah. I can see how it went. So you you want、uh, like、um, <laughs> the the proof of others? Yeah, like an established company.、Sure. I think I would maybe look into it for sure, and just to try it out. If it is safe enough, right? Yeah. Yeah. If、sure. it's safe enough, exactly. Yeah. 太难了，我找了十个，十一个拒绝我，然后我只选印度了，拒绝我。原本已经有人要被我问，就把我拒绝掉，超尬，直接尬到。再再再看看，再看看，再看看等下会不会有人可以给我采访。采访完 USC 的学生之后，我们现在来到 UCLA， 然后等下有一个比特币的峰会，然后我们去看一下那边的学生对比特币还有区块链的看法是什么。走吧 ，Go。Yeah, If we want three words to tell the new guys what is blockchain working, and can you tell me three words? Ooh, in three words, that's that's tough. But I would say secure,、um, accessible database. Well, I think I think the biggest、um, thing about blockchain that's so interesting is that we have now created a database that is decentralized. Yeah. And you know. The, for the longest period of time, we've had to rely on one organization controlling all, like all of data, and that was an issue with, for, the, for the longest time with money, because、um, the only way we could move money around the world was to go through a bank, and that has its own problems because the bank ultimately has the final discretion. And what's so amazing about、uh, Bitcoin is that it can't be hacked because we are, it, it exists on databases all around the world. And、um, anyone with、uh, internet connection can access this public database, and that means、um, that it is completely secure because any changes would be seen. Like permissible, permissible, immutable, limitless. There's a lot of opportunity to drive change and positive 
effect into our society. And I think blockchain is, is one of those that has the biggest opportunity to do so. Blockchain in three words. Yeah. Get on it. <laughs> oh, get on Oh, wow, nice one. Uh, you could Google the actual definition, but get on it. Have you ever tried some like device protocols like um, maybe Uniswap and yeah, yeah, those of course. swaps? Yeah, so I'm more of a I'm more of a Bitcoin maxi, but yeah, so I've, I've used Aave and Compound before. Sure. Which are phenomenal. Taiwan is more strict, but in America, I think like Coinbase is big enough for people to trust it. Yeah. And also, do you follow up that it is it, it just getting into SMP? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Coinbase just says, which means that everyone who is um, invested in the SMP 500, which is pretty much like everyone who's invested in the in the stock market, holds a little bit of Bitcoin now. Yeah. If you think about it that way. So you're gonna laugh. I mean, my background being, you know, this is the Bitcoin summit. Yeah. My background is specific, it's like Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin and Bitcoin through. So uh, I am one of those that they describe as boring, where I just hold my Bitcoin. Oh. And I, I participate more on the cultural, like the NFT, the art side, physical art, um, but less so in terms of using protocols. So that actually, I don't even have an answer for you. Oh, so, so it's, it's really cool because in Taiwan, there are like techniques and the, the investments, guys, yeah. because I interviewed in USC before, and it seems like, it goes into Bitcoins, believers, and the builders. Mm -hmm. Is it like two separate? Yeah, I mean, I think especially on the academic campus, there are two, you know, the faculty, the professors, as well as the students, they're looking for things to do, right? Yeah. You want to have a career, what can you do in Bitcoin? What can you do in blockchain? And I'm a minimalist, I'm very clean. I like a life that's, you know, not necessarily, you know, pointing me in a bunch of directions. And yeah. Bitcoin, just holding it, is something that allows me to be really focused elsewhere in my life, right? And so there are very few of me out there that I'm just happy, you know, to be a part of the community. I'm happy to build that community, bring that education to the masses, and less so build, you know, on Bitcoin. Yeah. In terms of uh, like my preference when Bitcoin's price is high or low, I mean, I actually like bear markets. Me too. Because they're peaceful. And you can build, right? And I yeah. build, right? I build communities and different platforms like that, but they're lovely. As soon as Bitcoin's price gets high, everybody changes. Yeah. Everybody's like, oh, I'm that guy. I got, I got Bitcoin or crypto. I, I think you build like communities is, a, is the thing we want to do because yeah. we are running a community uh, education brand in, in Chinese and for the Asia market. It's, I mean, it's needed, so I applaud you. That's fantastic. I, I love the vibe of today's conference. In Taiwan, all the regulations are running and it is too difficult to have lots of like Bitcoin holders and the builders that get together and have some discussion. Well, yeah. I appreciate the kind words and, and that's all we're trying to do here. You know, Bitcoin Bruins, the mission was to create a safe space for dialogue around Bitcoin. But at large, we want this conversation, whether it's Bitcoin, Blockchain, Web3, to be happening in the classroom, outside the classroom. It's my personal belief that if you don't talk about it, you're not going to grow. You're not you know, going to feel that curiosity. So. Can you give students from Taiwan a slogan? What can power them to learn blockchain and Bitcoin? Bitcoin is fixing the world's money. What I really want to say is, uh, you know, this, this generation is, is very scared because we can't um, afford living the way that people used to. And we now have a way out, and that is Bitcoin. I mean, the crypto market or industry is growing and you're kind of in a sweet spot where you've had over 10 years of innovation happening, uh, where now you have actually a cohort of later stage, more mature companies that have alum that are now going off to do their own things are, you know, giving back to the industry by funding, you know, different initiatives or startups. So in terms of the job markets, I would say that's one of the best places to be in right now, you know. Uh, you get to work on the future of finance um, and other different use cases of blockchain um, in a growing industry, whereas you know some other industries may actually be suffering from compression uh, in terms of available jobs. So lots of opportunities there, lots of blue ocean, um, and get on it. Yeah. So which kind of DeFi do you think it, it is better right now? Okay, so DeFi hasn't been exciting for a while, but now you're starting to see some interesting things. Um, for example, stable coins, which has not been sexy for a long time, is now sexy. Because you look at any stable coin chart up and to the right, so there's a lot of activity happening over there, um, especially when it comes to yield around stable coins. So that's probably some place that I would look at. You know, if you want to go a little bit more exotic, 
actually, this is not even exotic, but you know, tokenized equities, how do you actually build out crypto native derivatives on it, maybe with perpetuals um, on equities. I don't know if that actually makes sense, but um, that's an area of experimentation that's happening right now. And you know, there's a lot of these other really cool stuff like permissionless lending and um, new asset creations like derivatives on real estate markets, for example. Um, these are things that did not exist in traditional finance or couldn't exist in traditional finance, but are now enabled because of crypto. For the starters or like for the beginners, what are the sources like they can follow on, on the internet or what kind of source they can start with first? Yeah, I would say um, instead of answering that directly in terms of, uh, hey, you know, you want to look at these kinds of platforms, I would actually say in terms of skill set, you would want to learn how to read the chain. Um, there's a lot of alpha, a lot of information that's on the blockchain that people forget is one of the main reasons why people get into blockchain in the first place. So if you're able to develop a skill set on, you know, being able to analyze what's happening on chain, then you'll probably be able to learn 10x faster than if you were to just read, you know, research reports. Um, so dig in and get into it, you know, yourself. Um, learn how to navigate the chain, um, and you'll probably find yourself at the bleeding edge a lot sooner than you might expect. Go. 那你有聽過區塊鏈這樣技術或是加密貨幣嗎? 就是一些手拉拿的幣<笑> 沒有到很清楚我覺得它是一個蠻符合未來趨勢那同學我覺得可能就僅限於比較先進的國家或者是大城市吧科技我對我來講我會覺得有點疑慮會差不多這樣目前不會目前不會為什麼因為我覺得如果我沒有很懂就下去的話感覺很容易被別人割韭菜所以至少要等我稍微搞懂它的運作模式才會想要去投資它有考慮過但是我覺得以我現在個人目前
都没那么多钱可以去承担可能风险比较大的东西，我就会比较没有优先去考虑这个东西，这样子。那你有想要加入像区块链研究社去了解说这个东西在干嘛，然后之后才可以去投资吗？我会有兴趣可以理解听听看。那我会差不多。目前还好。那那你可以用三个字帮我形容一下区块链或是加密货币吗？未来性、安全、趋势化。哟，终于回来了！<笑>你不回来，这个片尾真的不知道怎么拍了。可以帮我总结一下台美的差距吗？其实台湾的社群比较偏向在炒币，疯狂的在交易这一部分。然后在美国的社群，其实更多的是 devote 在这个社群里面。然后，呃。大家一起做研究，就是比较没有那么有这种铜臭味的感觉了。然后其实有个共同点，就是大家其实对区块链和加密货币背后到底在做什么，其实都不太清楚。我觉得现在的区块链或者说加密货币领域，就是整个 Web3 领域，就像是那个教授讲的一样。Get on it！ 现在还是大蓝海时期，台湾的 Web3 人才非常非常的多，然后也希望可以看到更多人加入我们的行业。如果你今天想要有系统性的学习自己在投资什么，不管是加密货币还是区块链这样技术 k n o w z y 未来在暑假，然后还有未来的规划，都会给你一个系统性学习区块链和加密货币知识的方式哦。暑假还有一些活动，希望到时候可以在线下看到大家。See you guys， 拜。